We reviewed this Dell XPS end of last year and some of you left a comment for me under the video and telling me that I should have tried the Dell liquid cooling options on this very same computer. So I listened, I did the homework, I was really wondering what's the performance gain this laughable thing versus this thing and it's 3, 5, 8% best case scenario but there is way more into this. So this was a Black Friday deal. I could not change any of the components. It came what it came with because when I ran this configuration against PC Part Picker and spec out the cheapest options with the same specs, this PC was still significantly less. I was unable to make any modification. It came with whatever came with. When I go to BIOS, I see overclocking and that's grayed out and disabled and unable to turn it on because I don't have a key CPU. I'm very tempted to get a key CPU just to run through all these tests again and see what kind of score would I get because some of you are telling me that you have a key CPU and it's amazing. When you go to overclocking to BIOS, you just pick things and the computer is significantly faster and solid solid as it gets no issues whatsoever with the overclocking i'm not sure if i have to have a k processor from the straight or if i can just throw a k cpu in it and being unlocked i guess i will find out but if you have any experience just like you did before please let me know in the comment section so i don't have to spend a couple hundred dollars on for no reason and then resell the cpu this liquid cooling system was not an option because my PC came with this thing, which is a desktop cooler from a Dell business class office desktop. It's an i5, 13th gen, not this, but the newer version of this, exactly the same, has this thing in it. This is a creator or a designer PC or even a, a gaming PC. Why? And that's why, because the performance between the two is three, five or maybe eight percent best case scenario but that's not all there are a lot of other things we have to factor in so let's get through that one of them is noise some of you said in the comments i hate the pump i can't stand the, the constant noise of the pump this thing is significantly more silent and it is true when i'm running this little tool uh, it tells me that the noise level with the pump it's 35 decibel constantly but that's a good thing because it's a CPU usage is 1% is 35. It's a CPU usage 100% is still uh, 35 in my case. If I put this PC away from the sound meter, away from right above the pump, I don't hear it. I, I can't hear. It's nothing getting picked up, especially if it's under the desk. If this thing is running with the original cooler, the sound meter doesn't measure anything on the 30, it just on the 30 or it bumps up to 31 or 32. But as soon as we start pushing the PC and a PC is not expecting to do that, it revs up this fan so high that we are getting 60 to 70 decibel right off the bat. Of course, then throttling kicks in and shuts the fan down. But we have that experience when it's like out of sudden, it's a lot of fan noise and then it goes away. Between the two, my personal preference is the pump. When I'm telling you that it's only average 5% plus coming out of as performance wise from this pump, that's not the whole picture. With this, the performance comes out a little bit less evenly. Between the highest and a lower score, is there is a bigger dif dif difference between the highest and a lower in here. The lowest performance score in any test software is still higher than the highest coming out of here. The pump puts out the performance significantly more evenly across the board. Installing a pump into this thing is, takes two minutes if you have no experience or if you don't have a manual, which I haven't had a manual because this pump is $166 on Amazon. I have no idea how much that charges you for this. I'm assuming it's not less. If you go to eBay, this was an open box, brand new item. This pump costed me $65 shipping included. So that's pretty much a no-brainer. And I don't have to rip the 
components out, I don't have to take the motherboard out, I don't have to put a, a third party plate on it with a third party cooling system because this thing fits right there. You just literally take the four bolts out here, put the four bolts in, and this radiator with the fan just slides into this slot, single screw, and install the up and running. Extremely easy. Cost, yes. When you build this PC at Dell.com and it's customizable, Dell only charges you 50 bucks for this. If, if you are thinking about it, go get it. Because after the fact, 150, pff, I would not buy 100 for 150. Especially now I know that it only gives me 5% average performance boost. But the noise for some of you and for me as well is a is significantly game changer. I don't want this fan to spin up on the highest RPM because I find that more bothering than have just a teeny tiny bit more but can't stand on this. If it's under a desk, I don't hear this at all. What else about this? Well, there is a third option, which is not here because it's a ship, but they haven't made it in here. So Dell was used to offering a tower cooler, significantly larger heat skin. Uh, the fan is sandwiched between the two parts and have copper heat pipes in it, I think six of them. So that is coming. If you go to Amazon, that will cost you about $60, $70. Go to eBay, $15, $25 free shipping. I can't wait to install that thing and see what's the difference. So what else is a con in regards of the pump, the lifetime of the pump? I'm an IT professional. If this pump starts running louder or makes any noise when I'm not expecting, I notice something off. This PC, my belief, will last five to seven years, no problem whatsoever. XPS hitting the shop after 10 years from somebody who has started just having issues for the first time with the PC. It can last 10 years. Will this pump last 10 years? Some of them has a six year warranty on it, maybe. Probably not. At one point you will need to replace a pump. If you're not technical, you probably not will pick up that the pump is actually dying or have some issues or people just like will think it's gonna go away or will re it resolve itself or I don't even know what's the noise coming out of the PC. I'm, how bad can it be? Since it's liquid, and there's going to be some crazy, crazy expensive stuff attached to this PC. Any kind of short uh, problem with the PC, with the liquid and the circuit board or anything like that could be devastating. I can't let that happen. I will have to put this fan back in because whatever this PC is going back, uh, I don't think the owner will be able to, to figure out if there's anything wrong with the pump. For me personally, I would keep the pump. Also, the KCPU. Some of you have a KCPU. I don't. I, I'm really, really want to buy a KCPU. The same exact thing, just the unlocked version. Throw it in here and see what's the difference in that scenario. Also, some of you are telling me that when you go to, to the Dell BIOS and unlock the overclocking with your KCPU, the system is solid as it gets. No glitches, no artifacts, nothing whatsoever. No blue screen and a performance gain is great what you're getting. To be honest, I expect at least 10% out of this. So better be a good uh, large difference between those numbers if I if I spend a couple hundred dollars on that CPU. Obviously, I will resell, so there's going to be no loss in here, but I really, really want to see that. Yeah, thank you so much for every single comment you left under these videos. Uh, it educates me. It, helped me. it helps me to think differently. Um, I'm doing the same business class PCs, some residential service in a past, two decades and it's it's an eye-opening experience for me to have all these different options and opinions and they, they all legit maybe if we put the kcpu in this maybe this pc would be lasting at somebody for two years longer than the non-kp uh kcpu so we'll give it a shot hopefully i can make that happen i'm really wondering what's that tower which should be right here cooler will perform I'm running these back to back, these tests for, for almost 10 hours a day and it's not enough. It's just only me. This is not multiple people testing the same thing over and over. I only have one PC. Uh, one thing I learned, if I have 50 computers in the same room, brand new, same model, same exact spec, there's going to be maybe one or two which going to be run visually faster than the other two or slower. Is, is just what it is. Like even when they are in the same specs regards of manufacturing, assembling, 
there still could be performance difference. If I'm running these tests back to back, there is difference between them. That's why I have to run them so many times. So thank you so much for your, for your input and I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video. Scott's out.